exciting, exciting day. Uh, the week was good, right? Yeah. This week I'm going to be even better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, man, I'm, I'm so excited for today. I'm telling you, I'm just full. But, uh, let's go to our uh, Well, before we go there. Good morning, Facebook. Father, we thank you, God, for, for just being so good. Uh, we just, we love you. I was sitting in the back and I just started thinking about all the things that you've done for us this week, Father. And just want to take the time to say we love you. We just honor you, God. You're just so good. You're just uh, just excellent. You yes. serve a, a, a mighty, mighty God who don't really need, he doesn't need us, but he loves us so much that he just, you know, sent his son to die just for us to reconnect us back to his perfect will, which is the kingdom. And so far, we thank you, God, that your kingdom will be on display, Father. We thank you that people will walk in and walk out changed and made better, Father. We thank you that every need in the house will be met on today, God. We thank you that because you are a God who gets results, Father, we thank you that that same uh, type of spirit will be on us, Father, to get results. Father, we thank you, God, that you will teach us through your word how to put in practice your laws that uh, uh, operate uh, through the kingdom, Father, so we may be able to show others how to have results in their life, Father. Yes. We thank you, God. We really, really do appreciate you, Father. We yes. just, uh, we're just amazed by how good you are, Father. When we're not, uh, as we would call, good, we know that you are always good. You are a constant God, Father. We can trust you. We can lean. We can depend on you, Father. You will never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us, God. So we know that you are always right there with us, Father. We we know that that that. You just, you just have us in your arms, Father. You yeah. protect us, God. You keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger, Father. You keep our minds uh, sane because we keep our minds on you, Father. You protect our hearts, Father. You, uh, you're you just so awesome. We just love you. We reverence you, Father. We magnify you. You're bigger than any problem that we have to that we can ever face, God. You give us, you're the best stimulus package man could ever want. <laughs> Ways of having success, Father, yes, because you put it in law. It never changes. So yes. we just operate your law and we're guaranteed that success. Yes. So we thank you, Father. Yes. We adore you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, give you thanks again. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
trust and believe you, Father, according to your word. As everyone in this sanctuary and everyone at home, you're lifting up your hands to the God yeah. of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's the God of Levi and Betty Farm. What's your name? And we declare, Father, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Now we declare every need is there in this house. From mental to physical to spiritual to emotional, we declare none will walk out of this place the same. Because your glory has shown us favor. Your glory has shown us kindness. Your glory has shown us the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So we honor you, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for forgiving us. We thank you for another chance to honor you and to bless you, Lord. We depend on you. You bless our bread, you bless our water, you bless our transportation, you bless our health, you bless our children and our children's children. You have been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So Father, we lift up our hands and we honor you and we declare we love you. We appreciate all that you are and we appreciate all that you've done and accomplished in our lives and we will never forget. We'll always remain humble. Yes. Knowing that we are who we are by the grace of God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. 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 I said thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
your first time of being a part of the Religious Global Church, we ask that you will raise your hand so we can acknowledge you at this time. Amen. All of our first time visitors. Amen. 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 www.relentlessglobalchurch.org. We want you to fill out this information so that we can make a personal contact with you. We thank you for joining us, and we know that God has a word just for you in the house. We thank you uh, for making this place a place of worship, and we celebrate you on today. So, Relentless Global Church, let's thank our first time. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Fill it out and make sure you give it back to the uh, urchins before you go and or if you're in person you can put it in your offering receptacles and we'll respond to you that way. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Let's, let's hold my hand. If you were your spouse or wherever you went, hold hands. Let's pray. Let's set ourselves in agreement as we prepare to receive the word of the living God. Thank Amen. Thank you, Father. Once again, Lord God, we honor you and we thank you for this time of studying your holy word. Pray God all things to my remembrance that I humble myself before your holy presence. My body belongs to you. My eyes and my ears belong to you. My tongue belongs to you. Use me as this vessel of clay, Father, that your anointing may flow through me, that the seed of the word of God may be sown into the hearts of we, your believers. We receive your word, and we shall produce 60-fold, 100-fold, some 30-fold, but we receive a harvest based on the word sown into a good heart. Now, Lord God, let your anointing flow burden removing, yoke destroying power that those who came into this place and those who are at home that they can sense the anointing and the presence of Jehovah and that they would never, never be the same after yes. having heard the word of faith. Yes. So Father, we thank you, we honor you, we declare that it's so in Jesus' name. All that agree, shout amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. The baby said amen. I got a baby from the baby. That you can walk 
in the things of God, yes. but is only manifested by your faith. Yes. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you see, see uh, can I just, can I say it like I want to say it? Yes. And y'all won't be offended. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not saying you can't sow into your man of God. I'm not saying you can't sow into your, your, your ministry. I'm not saying you can't sow into your favorite evangelist. You can't go get your all from Israel. If you choose to do that, that's your business. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying you can't listen to the, your favorite prophetess on TV and pay for her prayer show. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, it's going to work according to your personal faith. That's right. Amen. And when I'm teaching you, you don't have to sow a seed into me. Amen. Amen. When I'm teaching you, you, you don't have to have oil from Israel. Yes. And you don't have to get water from Jerusalem. Yes. All you need to do is get the word and accept it by faith. Oh, 
me. Yeah. I got to change the way I think. Yeah. Come on now. So now, we talked about nine things. Uh, we closed with seven. But we talked about nine things that faith is not. Remember on last week, last couple weeks, we talked about what faith is. Right. Today, we're going to close with these uh, nine, what faith is not. So quickly, we're going to go to verse seven, then we're going to do number eight, number nine. Are you at home listening? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Pay attention. <laughs> Number one, faith is not a get rich scheme. You're going to have to work. Yeah. Now, when I say work, I say, I'm talking two parts. Your natural job, right. whatever your location is, mm -hmm. and your spiritual aspects of work, going after the work. Yeah. I, got, I get up at a certain time every morning. I take a shower, I do this and that, and we do all the things that we need to do to be able to be able to do what we need to do to get ready for work, you know, get the kids together and all the routines that we have, right? Yes. But then there's my spiritual aspect. I gotta pray. Mm -hmm. There's gotta be somebody in my day I'm praying. Yes. Yes. There's gotta be somebody in my day I'm reading or listening to the word. Yes. There's gotta be somewhere in my day I lift up holy hands and worship my God. Yes. Every single morning, uh, my wife and I, we have this routine. She goes, she leaves before me. And I stand up. We have these two huge trees in my front yard. Every morning, it's quiet. No one's kind of moving around. Every morning, I stand between those two trees and lift up my hands to God. Wow. And I say the same prayer every morning between those two trees. Because uh, I'm leaving God for get freedom from my house. Because only the only gift we have. And I said, the day comes and now is that this home is paid in full. We are get free. Yeah. And we know no thing about the Lord. Y'all yeah. yeah. didn't know that until I told you. Right. 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 Because it's according to my faith. Right. Now I'm faith in the trees. Then I step out on the front of my grass, a sidewalk, I go to the edge of the curb, and then I turn around, but my house is this way, now I'm facing uh, my neighborhood. So I lift up my hands and I see nothing in the sky. Yeah. And I said, Father, I lift up my hands every morning. I lift up my hands and I say, Father, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and all the other prophets, as they stood in their day and time and believed you by faith, so I stand. And I lift up my hands to the God of heaven. And according to my faith, I'm believing for this, that, and the other. I call the name of my children. Because I'm believing God for all this for my children. So now, what, what am I saying to you? You can't get into this spiritual wall thinking that I'm only going to get in to get what I want because that's what we've been taught in church. Amen. We're going to off a house, a car, for a man, for a wife, for all these things that we want. And then when we get what we want, we walk away from God and wonder why things are going down in our family. Amen. Number two, faith is not talking about biblical things, but practicing what you preach. Yes. You got to live right. Yes. 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 And then I say it again. You have to be honest with yourself where you are. If you're struggling and you know you're struggling with this, that, or the other, get some help. Yes. Yes. Call the church and we'll pray for you. Go yes. get some counseling. Whatever you need. Y'all know my testimony. When I first got married, uh, my dad was uh, physically abusive, ver ver verbally abusive in our home. I picked up those traits. Get on in my environment. Right. Right. I get married. My wife showed me nothing about going to have me hitting on her. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hitting more. Yeah. I know I got an issue with anger. Right. Brother went and got some help. You want to know why? I'd be divorced if I wouldn't win. Got some help. Come on. Right. Right. So what did I say? That which is natural comes first. Yes. Yes. You need some help with this, that, and the other. Go get you some help and stop yes. lying to yourself Come about where you are. continually call ourselves Christian 
and struggling to see. Yes. Somewhere your faith got to work on you. Yes. Number three, faith is not a blind commitment to an arbitrary feeling of closeness to God. Mm -hmm. What faith is, is not being blind to the reality of I got issues. It's, it's the taking the word and taking the blindness off my eyes so I can see God from the spirit realm. Yes. And then I can change my life. Number four, faith is not deedless, mm -hmm. but shows itself in what I do. If I'm mad at my wife and we have problems and I said something I shouldn't have said, so I go to her and apologize, but that's not enough. I have to show a deed to prove my sincerity, so I go buy some flowers. Yeah. If I'm mad at a co-worker and I say I'm sorry, they, they offended me or I offended them, I take them out to go have lunch and say, man, I apologize, I'm going to make this right. Faith is shown in what you do. It's revealing your deeds. Yeah, yeah. We got to behave ourselves according to the word. If not, we still struggle. You can be in the penthouse and struggle like you can be in the ghetto and struggle. Both of you struggling. Right. And both of you need to be set free. That's it. Right. Amen. 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 Faith is not in yourself, but in the living God. That's number five. Number six. Faith is not in your heritage. This is one of the favorite ones. Faith is not in your heritage or your bloodline. You know, the Queen of England, her husband just passed. And and that, 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 uh, uh, they, they were mad at the uh, young man who married a black girl. Yeah. It was all about bloodline. Yeah, it was. At the end of the day, it was, it was blatant racism. Yep. We don't want that child that's got that black blood in our family. Yep. That's what it was. Yeah. But as Christians, it's not about your bloodline. It's about your right. Because faith supersedes bloodline. Yes. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4, go home and read it. He makes it clear. If anybody in the Jewish bloodline can brag most, it's me, Paul. Paul clearly says, I'm of the tribe of Israel. I'm circumcised, a Hebrew. Uh, concerning the law, I'm a Pharisee. He said, concerning the seal, I persecuted the church. Because the church folk were crazy. So I am going to take on the duty of killing them all. <laughs> concerning zeal. Yes. But he ran into Jesus. <laughs> and many of us need to have that experience with Jesus. Yeah. You need to ask the Lord to reveal yourself to me. Yes. Yes. So that my faith can increase to believe beyond a car, a house, a man, this, that. Yeah. Look, if you seek the kingdom first, you'll have a car, a house, a man. So it's not about that which is natural. It's really about a relationship with yeah. God. Faith is not in your heritage. Number seven. Faith is not faith in faith. Because we got the word of faith. And that's another deception. Mm -hmm. Because we believe if we go to this kind of church that teaches nothing but faith, we'll have whatsoever we say. But that's a lie. Because all you got to do is look at the preacher and look at you. All you got to do is look at the amount of time and years you spent in that church and look at him and then look at you and see if he weighs the same. And you will find out they lie. Because faith is not in faith. Faith is not in your church. Faith is not in your preacher. Faith is in Jesus. And we got to watch this. Turn our eyes off the church. Turn our eyes off the pulpit. And focus our eyes on him. The author and the finisher of our work. Come on. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Not your church, not your bishop, not your evangelist. Amen. Him. That's why many of us fail. Yes. And they left you outside. Yes. In the dirt. In the dirt. And they didn't come out of their mansions to come and rescue you either. No. They stayed in their car and drove past you. Yes. Because the only thing they gave a hoot about was your offer. And we wonder why we're at odds. Wonder why we don't want to hear about preaching. Wonder why we don't want to hear about song. Wonder why we don't want to go back to church. And the pandemic and all those other liars deceived us. But watch this. We are self-deceived. Because the word that was changed. Our focus on what we were looking at was the problem. Glory to God. Let's look at number eight. Turn to 1 
Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. What faith is not? Faith is not walking in pride. Every head baby. But having the ability to repent, trusting in the blood of Christ. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, redemption through the blood of Christ. We're teaching on the blood on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. But watch this. I don't care what level you go up in your faith. Mm -hmm. I don't care how spiritual you proceed to be. Mm -hmm. You can be at the Midian level. Mm -hmm. You can be at the Oral Roberts level. Uh, uh, in, any great man or woman God you can name. You can be at that level. You can be at the Smith, Wigglesworth level. It doesn't matter what name you name. At a point in every man's life, you will have to repent. Right. Yes. Yes. How do I know that's true? Because all have seen and fallen short. Yes. There is not one of us from the pulpit to the back of the sound booth. Now, one of us can get to a certain level where we think we don't need God no more. Oh. I got it. I got it. Because Christ says, I don't need God. Right. That's what pride is. Yeah. Christ says, I got it. I can handle it. Mm -hmm. uh oh, I got Rolls Royce now. I'm good. My suits cost two thousand dollars now, and not from Sam to Walmart anymore. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm at a level now. My faith has brought me this far, so now I'm good. But now I'm putting you down at the expense of me going up. Mm -hmm. And look, we don't realize this pride and Satan waiting for you to get to the mountain. Because as sure as my name is Pastor Leroy Barnes Jr., pride will bring you down. Yep. Yeah. And Satan can't wait till you get to the mountain top. And you didn't, uh, you didn't judge yourself according to your faith to be true to yourself about yourself and get mad when somebody tell you you need to change and you don't want to hear that. Your wife been telling you you need to stop. You don't hear that. Your dad called you. Your auntie called you. You got people that love you trying to tell you take your behind the church and turn your life around. But you don't want to hear that. And then you fall. And everybody sees Right. Everybody knows it now. Yeah. Because you never judge yourself concerning your fact. It doesn't matter who you are and where you are. Every man is subject to a fault. Right. Yeah. Every man. Yeah. That's right. Matthew 5 and 23 says, Matthew 5, Matthew 5 and 3 says, Blessed, these are the words of Jesus, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Poor in spirit is defined spiritual bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. What he's really saying is, blessed is the man or the woman who knows that without Jesus, I'm a baker. Right. That's why he says, blessed are those who can humble themselves under the mighty hand of God and realize I am what I am by God's grace and not by me. Amen. 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 Number nine. Last one. Faith is not all or nothing. Remember I said earlier, faith is a progression. Yes. You grow in it, and you never arrive. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. You never come to a point where you really reach the end of your faith until you are with him ultimately. You know how you can believe for a house and it comes. That's the end of your faith because you believe for the house. You got it. Right. Now I'm, believing I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about deeper revelation of your spiritual walk in Christ. That's it. Because when you're in him, get in the house, get pregnant, have the money, it's the easiest thing to attain. Yes. God is not mad at you. God wants you to be blessed to be a blessing. God wants you to have an abundant, enjoyable, fulfilling, satisfying life in every area, mentally, physically, sexually, emotionally, every area of your life. Every need must be met because I'm in the king. We lack nothing. But watch this, saints. Faith is not all or nothing. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Let's look at the illustration of a man who has success. A man who's a leader. A man who's a ruler in the church. A man who has finances. But his faith couldn't shift his problem. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of this scripture is that he acknowledged that it was true. Yeah. Wow. Yes, yes. And that's where the church failed because nobody wants to acknowledge, everybody wants to portray themselves strong. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? But when you don't have the strength, you don't have the strength. That's right. And I need help. Yes. Watch what Jesus says. Right. 
This man comes to Jesus about his son. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, verse 23, if you can believe. Mm. Now, he's only coming to talk to Jesus about his child. But Jesus said, is this going to limit to your, your children? All of them. All of them. All of them. This, this is not limited to the cancer. Yeah. All of them. It's not limited to you producing a child. Yeah. All of them. It's not limited to health, finances, or anything else. There are people who are just simply believing that me and my husband can just get along. Yeah. 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 Look, I got the things in the mail and the, the letters of what we said our faith believe. I, I was amazed at what people would believe for because everybody believes in different things at their level of faith. And it's okay, but all things. All right. All right. The word of the Lord for relentless global church. And I got to keep saying it. I got to keep it before you so you don't start getting weak in your faith. Yes. This is the year of the kingdom. Yes. Yes. There are no more limits. Yes. You can have what you believe for. Yes. No more struggle, no more strain, no more stress. No more toil, no more fear. Right. None. Amen. And you have to say it every day. Amen. All things are possible to him that believes. Verse 24. Immediately, the father of the child cried out with tears. Now watch this. Your tears don't move, God. <laughs> and he said, with tears. Now, now, he's not making it. He really is at a point where I cannot do this on my own. And he's crying. But that didn't move Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus told him what the answer was. Mm -hmm. All things are possible to him that mm -hmm. believe. It's your faith that's on the line. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Amen. Watch this, people of God. Jesus said, he said, no, he said to Jesus, Lord, he submitted himself, I believe, but watch what else he says. I'm not where I ought to be. Help me with my unbelief. Yes, yes. The word unbelief is translated weakness of faith. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't mean lack of faith. Mm -hmm. It just simply means you're at a level where you can't produce. Yes. Wow. Yes. And I'm telling you, people struggle. <sighs> if, if I were not uh, over, over 15, 20 years of, uh, of counseling, my wife and I, we have a counseling business. Mm -hmm. And if it were not for that, I probably wouldn't believe this at the level that I do. Because we, we talk to so many Christians who, who, who they just beating the crap out of each other. Mm -hmm. But they go to church and look at the whole thing. We have people who come to us in private, now we're pastors, so it increases. Because now we're sitting there talking to people who are depressed, but they over the prayer department. Mm -hmm. How are you over prayer right. and you depressed? Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you the answer. It's your faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It's your own personal responsibility to believe God. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was 12 mm -hmm. and he is entered into the temple, Teaching the Sadducees and Pharisees at 12. He only knew that because he studied the word. I'm not saying he knew about revelation. I'm telling you, they taught him the word. He was still a man in the flesh. He was God, but he still had to grow up in the flesh. So somebody taught him his ABCs. He did not know them until somebody taught him. What's my point? It's the same with your faith. Until somebody teach you the purity of your faith and stop chasing out the thing and go after him because he's the author and the finisher of your faith, you will struggle going after a car. But you're dying on the inside. You will struggle going after a man that you get a, 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 a satisfy your loneliness, but you will choose the wrong one. Because your faith won't produce. This man told Jesus. I don't have the faith. Mm. Mm. The beauty of this story is he was honest about it. Yes, yes, Where most saints lie. Mm. Oh, I got it. I got it. In the name I got it. Then they go home without the promise. Yes. Now they cry. Yes. Wondering why your children won't believe in your God because you can't produce. Yes. According to your faith. Yes. So now he's 
says, help me with my unbelief. So faith is not all or nothing. We grow in the grace of God. And Jesus meets you where you are. He doesn't throw you away like most preachers have. Because you can't produce another offer. You can't show up and do this for me. You can't wash my car. You can't be a bus. You can't. When you can't give nothing else to produce, they throw you away. God don't do that. God has his arms wide open just for you and say, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you the rest that you need to sustain and increase your faith. When Jesus faith was getting weak, he was in the dark, and he asked his prayer partners to agree with me. They fell asleep. Yeah. Yeah. He went a stone's throw away, and he was weak in his faith, and, and oh, like, he was weak in his faith, and he couldn't depend on the church. He couldn't depend on the deacons, but God sent angels. Yeah. Yeah. God will meet you where you are. Glory to God, man. Yeah. Yeah. Angels came from heaven. And what did they do? They ministered yeah. unto Jesus. Yeah. What did they do? They helped him increase his faith yeah. so he could endure the cross of Calvary. Yeah. And God did. Yeah. Yeah. That's your crash off. God did. Yeah. Not your seed. God did. Yeah. Not your crash God did. Yeah. 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 We got to grow up. Yes, sir. Yeah. And go back to him. Yes. Glory to God, man. Focus on him. Yes, sir. Yes. He's the author and the finisher of what you believe for. Yes. He is. Yes. He is. Yes. Yes. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Yes. And again, I want to read these in at least two different translations. And Brother Good, do we have a message? Yes, sir. See, let, 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 let's do New King James Version. And then do message, and then we'll close with Amplified. Mm -hmm. Now, how does this faith we talk about work? Yeah. First of all, let me give you another definition. Give it, give it to the New King James first. Faith is, I want you to hear this clearly. Yes, sir. Faith, we, we, we walk by faith every single day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You sat in this chair by faith because you didn't check. Right. You started your car. You didn't check all of the pressure. None of that. You didn't check the pressure on the tire. You just got in it and hoped it would start. Yep. By, faith. by faith. You drove down here to come to this church hoping pastor to have a word by faith. Yeah. Because that's the only purpose you come here. We don't have, we don't have a choir. Right. So you better love the word. <laughs> you don't have children in church yet. Yeah. So you better be here for the word because there's nothing else I got to offer you. Right. But you still show up by faith. Yeah. Now watch this. You have a doctor. Yeah. You don't know if he was mad at his wife. You don't know if he's suicidal. But he prescribed you some medication. And, and you took the medication. Uh -huh. By faith. <laughs> they got it on the pill. Take three with water and food. And you took three with water and food. Now why is it we can believe that but we don't believe God? Right. Come on. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Girl, I'm cooking. Y'all been even cheering on him, cheering. Y'all been cheering on him. I'm cooking. You have every expectation that mama is telling you the truth. And you can't wait to go over there to get your pork chop. Yeah. Because <laughs> mama says she cooked. Yeah. Now, you got that level of confidence in your mama, but yeah. when God says, okay. we got it. Yeah. And wonder why our faith is so small. Mm -hmm. When we got confidence in a man more than we have in the living God. Yeah. Yeah. Now faith is the substance. That word substance, and me and you all, my mature saints have heard this before, so allow me to give you another view of it. That word is translated title deed. Mm -hmm. Title deed is like a mortgage company. You buy a house. You go to the mortgage company and they give you a set of keys to your house. They you sign paperwork and the paperwork says, title D says, uh, uh, is a document constituting evidence or a right of ownership. That's what title D means. It says, I had it. I'm at the north side of town, but the house that I'm believing God for is on the south side. But I'm at the north side in the office signing papers. 
But the title deed already says, I have it, even though I haven't unlocked the door. That's what your faith is. Faith is, if I'm believing God for my marriage, or, or I'm believing God to stay morally, sexually pure because I'm a single young woman, I'm a single young man, and that's going to take some faith to keep yourself in the time we live in. All things are possible in that way. So now, watch this. You have to walk in the house. You already have a vision of it when they were building the house. You already know that's tall on the floor, what kind of ceiling they have, but you technically don't have it, but the documentation says it's mine. That's how your faith works. It says, I, I'm, I'm believing God for tuition. I believe God by the end of the year, every debt will be paid. Now, I set my faith on that. I don't know how. I don't have to know how. I just need to believe it. I believe in God for healing in my body. Right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing right now that's making the shift. I'm still feeling the pain. But you stand on your faith to believe what God said, yes. irregardless of how I feel. Yes. The title deed is what God said. Yes. Not what the doctor said. Yes. Touch. Yes. Evidence. Evidence. Your faith 
is what you can read out of the word yeah. and you can touch it. Yeah. 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 All you have to do is open up your heart to receive what God says and, and receive it into your heart. Mm -hmm. Now the key to this is a good heart. See, a lot of us got a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm your brother who did. I, I, you you got to work on your man. It takes a lot of work. Amen. Watch this. It takes a lot of work to be seen. A lot of work to keep yourself sound by trusting what God said. But let's look at the amplifier, right? Now faith. Now faith. You see how it's capitalized? Yeah. Now faith. Watch these words. Is the assurance. What's that next word? Okay. Title D. Okay. Confirmation. You know how you go to the airport and you, you haven't seen the airport, you haven't met the pilot, you don't know if the plane is clean or dirty. But you have a confirmation yes. that you have a seat right. on that plane. Yes. You already paid up front. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Uh -oh. yes. Yes. You don't know if they have enough gas. Yes. <laughs> don't they do that. You don't know if they got peanuts on the board, on the board to say, you don't know if they're going to give you steak. You don't have a clue. But you pay for the ticket in advance. Yes. Yes. Okay. You know why you pay for the ticket in advance? Because you have a confirmation. Yes. Your, the word of the living God is your confirmation of what you're believing for. Yes. I already have it. Yes, yes. Confirmation of things hoped for. Divinely guaranteed. Hear that word divinely? That's spiritual, you know, because you don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. But divinely guaranteed. The evidence of things not seen. This, I love this word. The conviction. The conviction in my heart. That is true. Irregardless of my circumstance. I don't care how you lay it out. I'm going to have a full time job with business. And God is going to take care of me. He finds me this job. He got a better one over here. Bow me. 
Stop the madness in your life. Yes. Stop the confusion in your life. Yes. Stop disobeying God and give it to the formal of obedience. Yes. Uh -huh. Number four, by accepting, watch this. By accepting the word literally, mm. physically, spiritually, that it doesn't matter what life throws at you, God is true. Yes. 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 Number five, but by believing, how does faith work? By believing, God can create out of what we cannot see. Mm. Yeah. God can do it. I said God can do it. Yes. Number six, wor words frequently quoted as your agreement. You must declare the word of God. Remember I said one of the quickest ways of seeing this work is to memorize certain scriptures on the issues of your life. Mm. So if I'm believing for my marriage, I don't need to be quoted by natural scripture. Mm. I need to focus on marriage. Mm -hmm. And what I declare comes to pass. Yeah. And number seven, a confident, oh, this is good. Faith is a confident, watch this, look into my future. Wow. Come on, sir. How do I do that? By meditating on it. That's why there has to be a time. See, when I say this, if people, see, the things that are easy to do, people don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Because think of you, you gotta be, you gotta have a monitor like a truck, like a, a first grade. You gotta have a monitor to take it to the bathroom. Saints are like that. You gotta have somebody to hold your hand. You 32! Come on. Amen. It's, 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 it's a confident look into my future. What I'm believing for is not here yet, but I have the confirmation of the title of deed. It's already done. But every now and then, in the natural, I gotta look into my future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do that? By meditating. Yeah. Get along in a quiet space. If you can't do it for five minutes, baby, take the five minutes. Take it. Yeah. And be still and be quiet and see yourself with a sound man. Yeah. Yeah. See yourself with a baby. You already got his name in the color of his yeah. clothes. Come on. See yourself with your body healed yeah, from yeah, the yeah. inside out. <laughs> you can see yourself going back to gym and jogging. Uh -huh. And I'm going to lose this right now. Yeah. 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 You can see watching me. Yeah. 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 You can see watching me. Yeah.
Jesus said, God said Jesus, that he died on Calvary's cross. He shed his blood for the remission of your sins. He died and he was buried in the tomb. And on the third day, the Bible says he rose from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the only God on earth that can proclaim that he died, yet he lives. And he said, behold, I give unto you the kingdom of heaven. I give you the keys to the kingdom. Because I want you to have victory. Just like I have victory on earth, you can have victory. The Bible says that Jesus said, pray that the kingdom of heaven will come on earth. But you can do that by confessing that he is Lord of all. Yes. If you have done that, please reach out to us on our website. If you're at home or wherever you are hearing this from all over the world, at www.relentlessfulchurch.org, you can join our church, you can give, you can let us know that you're saved, and we promise you we'll, we will respond to you. If there's anybody in this home that needs to give your life to Jesus or rededicate your life, if that's you, raise your hand. If you want to join the church, raise your hand. Let us know that you have a spiritual need. We want to pray for you and make sure those spiritual needs are made. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Pray every need made in the house. Let's give our hands up. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here. And let's give our giving script. I said uh, in the eight thirty service, well, one of the things I personally, as a pastor, I do my reading and prayer and my meditation to study to always have a word for you. But personally, for my personal life, I'm uh, starting with Genesis to read the uh, whole Bible again. I've done it many, many, many years ago. So the Lord placed on me for my personal life to start reading uh, from Genesis on through so I can increase my knowledge base for me. That's personal. But as I've been doing that, the last three giving scriptures came out of uh, the Old Testament for me. So let's turn to forgiving. Exodus chapter 35, verse 4. And I'm reading in a different translation, I think. But it says, Moses said to the whole Israelite community, this is the word of the Lord commanded you, for what you have, take an offering to the Lord, everyone who is willing. So that's chapter 35. Turn to chapter 36, and let's pick it up in verse 3. Now, the children of Israel left Egypt. They, uh, the Egyptians died in the Red Sea. Y'all know the story about that, right? And they came to the other side of, of Jordan, on the Red Sea, and the Egyptians all died. But before they died, and before they left Egypt, they had a favor from the Egyptians. They gave them gold, silver, money, and all those type of things. They did not need the money at all. There was no Neiman Marcus in the wilderness at all. <laughs> <laughs> there was no McDonald's none of that in the wilderness. What did they need the money for? They needed it for this. They're building a temple in the wilderness. The tabernacle is what it's called. But they're building a house of God. So now the money that they have that they got from the Egyptians, because God canceled their debt, they all got it. Yes. So now they got all this money they don't have a need for it because God gave them their clothes. Their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. They had water from the rock. They had manna from heaven. So they had no need of the money until God required it for him. Yeah. That's where you see this. You pick it up. And then he says, and they received from Moses the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. Now that's the tabernacle. So they continued to bring him a free will offering. Offerings in the church are free will. Malachi doesn't uh, 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 fit our time today because we're on a new covenant established on better promises. Because they said on the Malachi, you're cursed with a curse. You're not cursed. You can't curse that which the Lord has left. But it feels like a curse when you don't obey God when it comes to giving. Yes. You know, it's like the prophet said, you got holes in your pocket, you don't know where you're going to go. A lot of us experience that. We can't understand what's going on with our finances, but you got to obey God. Skip down to verse 6 in the same chapter, verse 6. So now Moses asked them to bring out what they brought. Now watch what he says, verse 6. So Moses gave the commandment and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let me, a man or woman, do any more work uh, for an offering of the sanctuary, and the people were restrained from getting it, uh, bringing an offering. You know what's beautiful about this? Moses asked for a specific offering for a specific thing. When the need was met, they stopped. Yeah. Now you know that don't work in our regular modern day church. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> but this is the point I'm making with this. The people willingly gain. No pressure. No pressure. If the Bible clearly says it was free will. If they didn't bring it, they were going to be mine. But they brought it so much so that they brought too much. How blessed 
for you. If you can give to the things of God, to the kingdom of God, and you don't run out. That's right. Oh, yeah. 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 To you, to, till somebody got to tell you to stop. Yeah. But you got the finances and you never ran out. Oh, then you all your hands. Because, because the reason why this in the old covenant is such a beautiful example because it tells you the heart of the people. Yes. When you obey. Yes. Not because I'm asking you to give to me. Yes. Not because I'm asking you to give to the Bill Project. Not because I'm giving you scriptures to say, God can't give your time. Y'all know it's 10%. No, I shouldn't have to say that. You should already know in your heart. God has been too doggone good to me. Yes. For me to run up. Yes. Why would I hold back the tent part that rightfully belongs to him in the first place? Yes. Yes, sir. Giving is always a man of the heart. Amen. I tell you, and I'll be one, maybe you never heard of anybody else say this, I tell you. If your heart is not into giving, and you don't believe in anything I say, keep your money. Amen. Because you won't be ever be able to say, those people at that church are all about money. You'll never be able to say that. Because I'm telling you to your face and at home. <laughs> Come on. If God can make you do it, surely I can. That's right. So it's got to be you love this church, you love this word, you love the idea of your house is up for honest for you to finance the church and the kingdom here. Right. So give and support. Amen. Because I will never line you up and beg you to do anything. Mm -hmm. I'm already, my wife and I are already blessed. Amen. And I'll say it again, we never started this church based on we need an offer. Uh -huh. We already blessed. Yeah. Without, the, without a visible church, yeah. we're called to this. Yeah. So at home, if you're ready to give, go to our website, go to the giving link. And for those who give already asked, for those who are supporting our building project, and, uh, and it's entitled Making a Difference. You will see tithes, offerings, gifts of love, and then you'll see Making a Difference. We're asking every family member to sow a seed of $1,000. If you cannot sow that seed, sow 10. Because see, we're not, we're saying that the $10 giving is just as significant as $1,000 seed. Right. God views them both the same. Yes. Huh? It's equal commitment, not equal giving. And those that are, are stronger can, can give more. To help those that are weaker. Yes. Because there are people who are, who, who are being laid off. Do you, you, you really believe I'm going to pressure somebody who's being laid off to give? No. Why would I do that? And you, you already trying to feed your children. Yes. Uh -huh. So that sister or that brother, I was so a $5 seed. They say, this is my seed. And God still honors that seed. Yes. But then those are others of us who are blessed. And we can give above that. My wife and I have already so I'm not going to tell you something we haven't done. We've already given a $1,000 seed and beyond. You know, because we believe in what God has called us to do. Are you ready to give? Yes. So let's pray as we prepare to give. At home, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time of sowing. It's a time of honor. So, Father, I give to the people of God the word. Now, Father, we're going to prove, prove yourself strong and mighty on their behalf. Because of their seed song and because of their good heart, show them your strong hand in their finances, in their mind, in their body, in their relationships in their businesses, show yourself strong on their behalf because we call for the kingdom as the people are blessed, the church is blessed. Yes. We declare to be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So those of you who are at home, God bless you. Go to the website. Show up on Wednesday. We're teaching on the blood.